So we will talk about sharing repositories online today. Let's make this a bit larger. And I will not do so much typing on the terminal, so I'll just move this down a bit. Um, and, um, and I would say, well, the very first question is when do I, when should I actually define a remote for my repository? When should I, when should I uh, share my work online? So Bjorn, what uh, what do you say? When is a good time in the history of of uh, in the lifetime of the project? When is it a good time to put it online? I, I think it's a, a good procedure to to do to set up the remote as you do Git in it that you actually set up the remote repository as one of the first thing as you create the project. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, uh, I would and, say, in my opinion, yeah. And that is not for that you, that is not for necessary sharing the project, but, but, but for being able to back up what you do. Yeah, exactly. It's a great, uh, it's a great way of actually backing up your system. And if your computer <laughs> breaks, then at least you know that you have uh, the, uh, the, your, well, the important data and uh, development uh, safe. So, um, as Bjorn said, it's a good way to back up your work and also to collaborate with other people, but don't wait until you actually start to collaborate, but, uh, but create a remote early and then uh, open it up for your collaborators when uh, the time uh, is right. So um, what we are going to learn today is actually how to create uh, um, uh, this repository on uh, a uh, server or a platform. And uh, we are going to use GitHub in the lesson, but, uh, but you can uh, use uh, other uh, services. I mean, you can use GitLab or, or you can, if you have your own server, you can, uh, you can set it up as well. And, um, and uh, to do that, so uh, I'm going to go to um, GitHub. And okay, actually one word for those of you which have not, uh, um, uh, who have not been able to join us yesterday, you uh, can catch up by uh, cloning uh, our um, local uh, repo, well, which is now shared on the code refinery. Uh, under the code refinery organization. So you can clone that onto your um, local computer and you can follow us uh, um, by using uh, by using that uh, recipe. But uh, how do we uh, create a uh, remote? So the first thing to do is uh, to uh, go to GitHub. So I will open a new tab here, github.com. And then I will sign in. Where is the sign in? here and uh, I will need to type in my 2FA factor, hold on. Oh. Okay, so, um, so here I will go to code refinery. No, or I will know actually, I will go, sorry, to my own repos. And then at, uh, let's see, I'm going to click on this plus button, which is in the very top here. So there's a plus there and then click new. So that is going to <clears throat> take me to a page to create a uh, new repository. And I will not use a, any template for that. I could use one of the other existing ones, but uh, let's choose no template and then uh, I will have a repository name so um, and I will call it recipe uh, 2023 <clears throat> and a small uh, description it's always nice to have a description of your repository especially if you have many and also when you share it and people uh, will know what this is about so let's say a uh, guacamole Oh, 
Okay, and I'm going to make this public and you should all, um, actually you do not need to, uh, to type along as you will do it as an exercise, sorry for not mentioning it. So you will do all these steps uh, in a little while. But, um, but please make sure that when you do it, you choose public so that you can tomorrow share uh, this uh, uh, repository with, um, with other persons. And then uh, one may add the readme file, but we are not going to add one at this point. And, uh, and uh, if this is um, a uh, code that uh, you are going to share with at some point, then, uh, then you will want to talk, you will want to choose an appropriate license. Actually, this can be changed during the life of the project. And we will have a lesson on, on licenses. But uh, in this case, it's just, uh, I, will, I will not choose any license. So, and then I will click on create repository. So uh, now I am ready to go. And actually GitHub is, again, I mean, very helpful in telling me how I can um, um, use this uh, remote uh, repository. So uh, I could actually create a new repository from the command line. And uh, and this, so if you do not have anything on your local computer, then uh, this is uh, the way to go. So you um, uh, you create a repo with git init, and then you commit, uh, well, you add some files and commit, and then, uh, and then you define a remote, um, uh, well, or you define uh, the this uh, remote repository, as uh, as a re um, as a remote which is called origin. So uh, sorry, maybe this is not so clear. So uh, um, with git remote add, then I simply uh, say that the remote called origin and origin can be any name, whatever you find useful, has uh, this particular URL. So git at GitHub the organization or user. Uh, and GitHub user, and then uh, the name uh, of the remote, so the repository on GitHub. Uh, but uh, what we will be doing is to actually um, um, push our local changes uh, to this uh, uh, remote um, repository, and then we will follow this second uh, suggestion. So how to push our existing local repository from the command line. Again, I mean, we will need to uh, define the remote uh, using the git remote add uh, command. And again, I mean, we need to, uh, to choose a name for this remote and I can call it origin or I can call it my recipe on GitHub, uh, whatever. It's just, uh, it should be usually uh, short enough so that, um, so that you don't need to type it a lot and it should be suggestive as well. But the default is origin, and that is what uh, you see here as well. And then uh, uh, renaming the branch uh, if needed, uh, as the default on GitHub is uh, main, so you may want to rename it. And, uh, and then uh, also then later on push, uh, the uh, push the commits that we have on, uh, on our, uh, um, local branch onto uh, onto the remote. Okay, so um, let's get back to the lesson. So we have done this. Looks a bit different nowadays. I mean, you don't see, well, well actually you do see these, but the, the uh, format is slightly different, but content is the same. So um, what uh, we, are going to do in the following is a short exercise. Actually, you are going to do this. And that is to push the uh, guacamole recipe that you have on your local computer onto GitHub. And uh, we are going to take uh, 20 minutes for that actually. So just uh, follow the steps that I have shown you and we, um, are going to continue then with inspecting history. But uh, yeah, let's see. Is there something that I forgot to say?
Okay, this is a good question. So what does a stage mean there? So let me go back to the repository. So here, so in order to um, clone your um, um, repo, you can either use uh, uh, HTTPS or SSH. If you have set up SSH keys for GitHub, and all of you should have done that, then it is uh, compulsory that you use the SSH uh, version when you clone or when you define the remote as well. So you see here. Also, when defining the remote, you need to have git at github.com and not HTTPS. It, because if you have SSH keys defined, then uh, then uh, the HTTPS will not work when you are going to try to push. So hopefully this is clear. And that is, uh, maybe I can comment. Uh, uh, that is because uh, GitHub is going to uh, um, renounce uh, uh, HTTPS, renounce to HTTPS and only use SSH in the future. And I don't, but I don't know exactly when that happens. It's been going on for more than one year. So, um, so if if you cannot find your folder, and no one else can help you find that, then uh, you can clone uh, the repo that uh, that we have on our. <clears throat> Uh, organization and uh, you can see that at the very top of sharing repos online lesson so here so if you really are stuck then please use that so then uh, yeah let's get into exercise time and then uh, we come back in uh, 20 minutes so 20 to 10. I saw another chat question please clarify again then very slowly what the exercise goal is and until when. So yes, um, so for the exercise, okay. you should create uh, a, a GitHub repository under your own account. And uh, once uh, you have done that, you should uh, push uh, the local repository. So the recipe that you have created uh, yesterday to uh, GitHub. Okay. In chat, I see a lot of confusion about cloning, people cloning if they don't need to. Maybe should we so, stop and back up for the big picture? I've been looking at the HackMD, so. Yeah, yeah so maybe so I should clarify actually picture. what what the difference between cloning a repository is and uh, or okay so let's say uh, so let me first explain what git clone actually does so i will go uh, back to the top so when you clone and uh, and a typical usage is git clone the url of a uh, remote repository so the repository on uh, GitHub or, or on some other platform, and then uh, a local um, a local uh, repository name. In this case, it's just the same. But in this case, it's actually a recipe. It's not the so, same. Yeah. So we start so, off uh, making we have so, some, yeah. something on our own computer first. And so when you get when you get clone, you uh, you you do not have something on your local uh, local um, computer you actually want to clone a remote repository from github or somewhere else uh, that uh, that you had not worked with before so this is a brand new repository which um so well an existing repository on github which you are brand new cloning on your uh, computer so that would be like your okay so instance of the GitHub uh, remote onto your computer. So there's two cases here, one where you have the repository from yesterday and one where you're starting fresh. Yes. So okay. uh, if um, um, if you did not, if you do not have something from yesterday, mm -hmm. 
then uh, then you should clone uh, a, a remote repository on your local computer. So and this, um, what you're sharing right here, you're basically getting the repository from GitHub and then you're removing the GitHub link and you'll use this to make a new GitHub link for the rest of the exercise. Yes, yes, that's a good point. So this uh, command here, git remote remove origin, that uh, that simply says that do not associate this URL that I had here for the remote repository to uh, my remote called uh, origin. And that is because we will want to define a remote called origin, but which points to another GitHub repository, our own GitHub repository, and not the code refinery one. Mm -hmm. Because, well, we want people to push their um, uh, local recipes to their own GitHub um, yeah. um, remote. So under their own account, not under a code refinery. So, actually, this is uh, right protected. So you yeah. will not be able to push to this one if okay. you tried. So once we get this disconnected repository on your, our computer, then we go to GitHub. We create a new repository there, which yes. basically is a new mm -hmm. repository name like this. So this repository name is Diana Yusan slash recipe yes. 2023. And it so, has yes. nothing and there yet. So this one has nothing here yet. What I will have to do, so once this is created on GitHub, then I have to go to my local computer and, uh, and then uh, if I do have a recipe from yesterday, then I, then I have to define my, what my remote repository is. So what is the URL for my repository? So that Git on my local computer knows where it should push all these changes that I have been doing yesterday. So then I, I uh, tell Git that, okay, as a remote repository, which let me call it origin in short so that I don't have to type this long name all the time, I want you to use this URL. And that consists of well, git at github.com if I use SSH keys and then it's my username. And then the name that I have chosen for this uh, remote uh, repository. And I have chosen the name recipe 2023. If you have chosen another name, then you will have to change that with whatever you chose. But it is perfectly fine to choose a different name. Just that uh, you need to be consistent in your commands. And then uh, I can rename the branch if needed. And, uh, and then uh, I am going to push. So again, still on my computer, I'm going to push the changes that I have done. So my local, um, um, uh, uh, my local so, so. commits, I'm going to push them yeah. to this remote, which I called origin. Mm -hmm. And I push all the changes which are in my uh, branch called uh, main. Yeah. So then on and uh, yeah. this is going, uh, one more thing. Uh, so this is going to create a reference between the main local branch to the main branch on uh, uh, on uh, <clears throat> the remote origin. So this is what this uh, dash uh, U means. So when I push again to origin from this branch, then it's enough if I just write git push. Yeah. But um, yeah. but otherwise you can just try git push origin main. Yeah. Yes. So, so hopefully okay. this is clearer now. Yeah. So we tell GitHub prepare to receive this with this name. And on our computer, we say, oh, over on GitHub, I prepared something. Now send my code over there. Exactly. So if you okay. do not do the GitHub step first, so if this, um, um, you are, uh, if this uh, recipe, if this remote uh, um, uh, remote uh, um, project does not exist, or you, if you have misspelled it, then uh, Git will tell you, okay, I actually cannot uh, find this or uh, or I cannot uh, connect to this uh, remote. So okay. it will give you an error message. Okay. So you cannot create a repository on GitHub from the command line. You have to go uh, to the web. Okay. 
So should we go to the exercise now? And we can give some yes. people some time to work themselves. So how long will this be? Okay. So then uh, uh, let's say quarter to uh, 10. But okay. if you are finished earlier, please try so that uh, maybe we start okay. a bit earlier. I mean, that's not a good time. Let's say quarter to 10. Quarter okay. to 10. So or quarter like, to 11 if you're in Finland. Yeah, that's like in 17 minutes. OK, so we will keep watching HackMD give any updates there. Um, yes. So see you soon. I guess that's all, right? Bye. OK, welcome back. We'll see from the um, HackMD that uh, there's a, little, a few problems with the SSH keys. Uh, the setup of the SSH keys is described in the installation instructions. So please uh, take a look at the installation instructions uh, after the lesson. We will not need SSH keys for the rest of the day, but they will be heavily used tomorrow. So we we'll have the afternoon to fix the setup of the SSH keys. Okay. So uh, now we're going to do uh, this, uh, show you how to inspect uh, the history. Um, and, uh, and you need to step out of the, the uh, res uh, repository where you are. So uh, please do a git status and uh, like this. And if you are in our repo, step out of it, and git status will show you that it's uh, that it's doesn't recognize the file system as as a repository, and that is where we want to be, in a parent directory or another directory with without uh, the dot git um, subdirectory. So what are our tools for inspection history? Um, we have something called the Git history browser. So uh, if you click on the, the, the link to network X repository, you get the his history view of the readme file. So this looks like uh, this. And here you, you can th then scroll uh, to, to the left and see the lines that are new will uh, are added with the different commits. So here we have uh, a user Emery Duis which on Saturday, January 28th, added a banner for user survey. And uh, we can scroll and see um, other older commits. And uh, the commits and what's changed is then highlighted in, uh, in the view. So we see the copyright notice is uh, brighter than the rest of the code. So this can be useful for inspecting individual files and, and then get the history of the file. Um, we have git grep, which grep, uh, you search for, the, for a, a phrase throughout the git repository. So with git grep some text, uh, um, some text will then be searched for in the git repository. We can try this out on the uh, network X repository. 
by pulling the repository and then cd into the old repository and do git grep minus i fix me. So let's do that. So I have one question. So git grep, does it uh, search uh, within the, uh, well, the latest commit or, uh, or the entire repository? It searches in, in the entire repository. So now we should get a list of the minus i between it means uh, that will uh, we search for fix me in both capital and small letters fix me. So here we see fix me as comments in the different uh, uh, files. Yes, and the shy is to make the search casing sensitive. Once again, Diana, what did you dash say? Dash i is to make the dash i option is to make the search case uh, insensitive. Yeah, uh, that's right. So it searches the current state. We get grep searches the current state of the repository. Uh, but it's also possible to search through all all uh, changed changes with the git log some text yeah and actually we make and sometimes i find it useful to add additional options to git log if the um, if the uh, message or the if the commit message is very long, so maybe I did log one line, for example, and uh, dash capital S uh, and the text you want to search, and then you can inspect the particular commit, right? That you're interested in. Are we meant to be typing along right now? Yes. So we can also in, uh, inspect individual commits with git show. So uh, here, for instance, we have git show with the, the long hash. Then we have uh, git annotate, uh, where you can see uh, line by line who and when the line was modified. It also prints the precise hash of the last change which modified each line, each line. So it's very useful for reproducibility. So let's try it out on the convert matrix dot part. Yes, and this is exactly uh, as the git blame uh, command that you can find. Well, the git uh, blame uh, box that you can find on GitHub. So if you click on that, uh, you will get the same information. Yes, you have a git uh, annot git annotate on on GitHub as well. That's right. So here we see the the hash here, and uh, this line was added by Ross Parnovsky on the uh, on the date. 19th of July in 2020. And we see the line here, the comment functions to convert network X graphs and to and from common data containers. So the, the, um, the output from the git annotate is piped into a command called less. So we, you can, uh, the less output uh, pages the, make, make the output fit into the terminal page.
So we uh, you, uh, can also use Git checkout to inspect code in the past. Uh, we used Git checkout uh, yesterday. So uh, one question. So when uh, when uh, should one create a new branch uh, together with uh, Git checkout instead of just using uh, Git checkout and uh, the hash? Um, one should do that if you uh, want to inspect all the code. Um, if you just want to inspect uh, all the code briefly, uh, uh, then it's okay to use just the hash, but you will then f get a message that the Git checkout Git uh, is working in the hash mode. We can see this if you do Git checkout and, and uh, the hash here. But if you uh, really want to inspect the code uh, and uh, I work uh, longer with it, you should uh, make a, a branch. Yes, so, so I guess whenever I expect to make some changes, then it's a good idea to create a branch. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so now we see that uh, the head is pointing to the to the uh, Hash one hundred and four B six eighty nine, but there is no brown, not a branch to it. No. Yes, and actually, it's nice to see that. But well, it's clear in this example that uh, when you git checkout, the reference for the branch name, so main, does not move when you move the head. So no. so main stays as, at the tip of the branch, and then only the head reference is moved to this commit when you use git checkout so if i will if i was to work uh, longer with the with the this uh, with with the with the code at this commit i would uh, add a branch name older older code like this and then git graph and head points to older code and uh, and it's easier for all the tools to just to use just the name older code And then uh, when I've, I've done with working with the uh, with with the, the older code branch, I'd switch back to the to main and delete the branch older code. So now uh, we have uh, an exercise for you. Explore uh, basic archaeology commands. Clone the uh, network X um, um, repository and uh, find the, the code line which contains logic error in the degree correlation. And um, in and you and uh, find out when the, this line was last modified and inspect the commit with git show. After you have done uh, the, this, you can continue with the git bisect uh, command and do the bisect exercise as well. Yes, and the, the, uh, if you have time, then you uh, you can do uh, git bisect. If uh, if you do not manage, that's fine. That is an optional exercise, so it's for the most well for the more advanced uh, 
participants. So yes, the first one is kind of compulsory and the second one is optional. Yeah, but so I was thinking, I'm uh, oh, sorry, uh, should we take a break for 10 minutes and then go to exercises? Yeah, and, that can, uh, we can do that. Spend take... 30 minutes for the exercises. So we can be back at uh, 10 to, uh, sorry, 22. 22 11 or 22 yeah, 10 40 if you're in Finland. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, have a break for 10 minutes. So and then uh, 30 minutes exercise. So we'll s start again at 10 40 or 11 40 in Finland. See you later. Bye. Okay, welcome back. So, um, from the uh, question and answers document, there seems a lot of activity, seem to be a lot of activity around this exercise or these exercises. So, we'll uh, I use some minutes now to summarize what's the purpose of this exercise and, and the commands. So we're uh, inspecting history and, and, we'll, and the purpose of inspecting history is that we want to find a commit that either adds something or removes something. And we have then different tools at our, our hands for do, finding this uh, commit or where uh, where what our in our interest to find it was introduced. So uh, git grep and git annotate works on the repository as it is currently, while git log minus s search through history and search through the whole uh, repository, also the history. And so, so this gives two different paths to uh, find the commit that we're interested in. In the exercise, you used uh, git grep and git annotate to find the commit that uh, introduced uh, um, the logic error. Well, uh, with git log minus s, you could search for the, for the string, and and uh, and get uh, the the commits where the the string is used. Uh, and and uh, then we create a branch. At, at the, uh, which we call the past code, past code uh, at the commit, which is of our interest. And we also introduced uh, in the solution, how to access the first parent of this commit. So this is then the, the, the hash commit, uh, the, the hash will with the tilde one. This gives the address, to, this is the way to address the parent commit. So all uh, these commands then give, gives a very good uh, set of tools to try to dig in, try, try to de dig into the code and, and find out the history of the, of the code. Uh, some of you have tried git bisect, and we, this is can be a very useful tool. And um, this is something you can read on. For those who, who didn't uh, get to get to this exercise, uh, I would pr propose that you read up after the lesson.
and try out the git project uh, exercise as well. So, uh, as I said, the git project is a powerful, combined with the other tools, are a, a powerful combination in doing archaeology in a project. Okay, then. So let's now move over to undoing and recovering. Uh, yeah, and one note only, so Git Bisect is great to combine with testing. So we'll show you how you can introduce tests in your code. And uh, when you, well, when you check your code for bugs and uh, then you can uh, run different, uh, different uh, test scripts uh, to see if it uh, compiles as, um, compiles and runs uh, as it should when you do uh, git bisect. So we'll uh, discuss how to undo changes safely and uh, see when undone changes are permanently, permanently deleted and how they can be retrieved. So uh, we'll do a couple of commands that can be used to undo mistakes. We also list a couple of common mistakes and discuss how to recover from the from them. Some commands modify history uh, and uh, and it's important then uh, to know whether you share this online or not. Uh, when you modify history, you should only it should only be on your uh, local repository before you share them online. Because it's, uh, if you first first share something online and then modify the history afterwards, uh, the two repositories. The, the one online and the one locally will be out of sync and this can lead to a mess. So as long as you commit something once or at least git do git add, you can always go back and find something. So uh, with uh, uh, if you commit, everything you commit are, are almost uh, retrievable. So uh, here we use, um, we list the command git restore. That's uh, an uh, newer, uh, version of uh, so uh, if your git version is older than 2019 um, you must use uh, git checkout instead of git restore so you can do some work and want to do undo commit or unstage modifications and you can always do that with git restore dot So let's see here now where we're going to go. So if I change to the recipe, okay. So let's we can use the. Uh, I'll just uh, list list the web page. So uh, we have made a few commits, which we recognized from yesterday. So and here we then realized that the latest commit was a mistake, and we wish to undo it. So then we have the command git revert. 
So this creates a new commit that opposes the, the, the old commit. So, so we'll, we get the message revert and the, the, and the, and the old uh, commit message. You can revert any commit, no matter how old it is. It doesn't affect other commits you have done, but if they touch the same code, you may get a conflict. So, so let's try, uh, you can try this out in an exercise, create a commit and revert to commit and inspect its history with the log online. So I guess we do the exercises. There are a couple of exercises. We do them all together yeah. after the... Yeah, so we don't, right. don't do it right now or... No, I can go through the... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so then yeah. we hold on a bit. Yeah. Uh, and if you... You can also sometimes you uh, you forget something uh, you are, uh, or you want to write another commit message. You can um, amend the last commit with git commit amend. So this can also uh, as uh, so this will change the last commit, also the commit touch. So this command modifies history. So if, if you do this on the recipe uh, repository, the recipe repository will be out of sync with what you have uploaded to the to GitHub. So uh, maybe a, a note for more advanced users. So because the hash is uh, is uh, created depending on the content of uh, the repository and the commit message and author then whenever you change any of that then the hash changes so that is why the hash changes when you change the commit message you can also reset the branch history uh, to move your branch back to some point in the past and and that we are then moving the head pointer to the some point in the past. This is can be done with git reset minus minus hard and the hash. So it will force a branch label to point to another point. So well with you uh, when you're using git reset minus minus hard, then it's uh, important to use Git graph before and after, so you see how the graph changes. So we also have an exercise on doing using Git reset. So Bjorn, when uh, when should I use Git reword and when should I use Git reset instead? Uh, that's a good question. I, I'm not fond of Git reword. Uh, really, I get use uh, Git reset. Um, and why I don't I like git uh, revert because it doesn't it just says uh, revert and the, the and the commit message it doesn't necessarily explain what the change is so I I like to use git reset and give a deeper explanation of why I'm changing the the history of the uh, repository. Mm -hmm. uh, and what what's your experience? So uh, so uh, uh, if I only work on my uh, local repository, or well, let's say I made a mistake in my local repository, and I did not uh, push it uh, to the remote yet, uh, so that others uh, have access to it, then I will use Git reset because it keeps the history cleaner. But then if uh, if I realize, I don't know, six months later that I had done some mistake and I want to revert the, the changes that in, were the, in that commit, and also uh, that's a commit that has been pushed to a remote and people have been using the code uh, 
in the meanwhile, then I will use uh, revert instead. So because otherwise, if um, if you change commits, which are in the history, in a shared history, then uh, then uh, you may get some uh, well strange error messages when you are uh, uh, pushing or fetching. So uh, so revert yeah. only for uh, revert for shared uh, repos and the reset when I work on my own because it's everything is cleaner and I don't have these buggy commits that I yeah, that's right. I don't um, want to that, take that, away. That's a good point. Okay, so let's then start with the do the exercises, three exercises, revert a commit, modify a previous commit, and uh, use git reset. So we'll uh, uh, okay, perhaps we should have a break or we'll have the exercise with, and then a break afterwards. There we're coming. So, uh, yeah, Richard. I think we need the break sooner than the exercises. Okay. I guess. Take a break. Break now. Uh, 10 minutes break to yeah 10 yeah. minutes break and then 15 minutes uh, exercise time so that would be then uh, I'll think I think we'll use 20 minutes break so it has time we have time for that okay even better great okay. great so so then uh, we are back at um... okay um yes so Great. see you then bye okay welcome back from the exercise and the break uh from the hack and i see that there are some uh, wishes that we go through the exercises um so i'll uh, i'll do that discussing the commands as we go along so we'll start with the um, git revert so here i have a repository which we now know with a recipe git graph so I had uh, added more content to the readme is, file. Is the audio bad for anyone else? And I'll uh, I'll uh, revert this commit with git revert and the commit message, commit um, hash. And then I'll get a, create a new revert, create a new commit that uh, revert the content to the readme. And uh, this comes then as uh, with the message revert, add more content to read me in the git uh, in the git log. So this is the how the git revert commit functions. I can then uh, use git commit amend on the same uh, commit and change the uh, and change the message. Yeah, maybe say why you chose to revert to this yeah. uh, particular commit.
wrong have it wrong content to read me so then git log one line git git show the hash so then I'll see that the git commit message has change has the change this reverse commits the hash number and I added the wrong content to the readme markdown file yeah so maybe you can scroll down a little bit so that we can see what the hash was of this commit before you used git amend git commit amend so so just thinking. scroll up a little bit in your uh, okay. in your uh, terminal window yeah so now it's ed and before it was 1a yes something something yeah so the commit changed the so hash the, changed the hash changed yes that's right So maybe I, I can come. So I use git commit demand in very few situations. And it's basically only if I, I uh, committed something and I realized, oh, the commit message is not clear enough. Then I, I will do git commit demand. But I will do this before I do any git push. Uh, if I did yes. git push, then I will just leave it as it is. Yeah. Because. Uh... Because then it's it's available to others who have shared it. Yeah, exactly. And then we have a git reset hard. So I'll do git graph, and uh, I'll. Uh, remove all this I'll go back to the uh, uh, tag mobile 2021 so I'll do git reset minus hard and the uh, hash number So head is now at merge branch less salt. Git graph. So now all the the added uh, readme is is it's gone. What happens with the changes in your working directory if you have any? And uh, and the staged modifications when you use git reset. Uh, the the if you use minus hard, I think they get uh, overwritten. So yeah, because, everything is cleared out. Mm. Because uh, minus hard minus minus hard changes the the uh, staging area and the work uh, work area. Is there a way to save the stage modifications? Or the working directory and still use git reset. Uh, that I'm not sure of. So uh, it is so yes, it's possible. That's why I asked. So if you want to save your staged modifications and also the modifications in your working directory, then uh, you should use git reset dash dash mixed. And that is the default option for Git reset. Okay. 
if uh, if you want to unstage whatever you staged and then uh, but keep the changes in the working directory then you uh, you can use uh, git reset dash dash what did i say sorry you said dash uh, dash mix, minus mixed so if you do mixed actually it's going to clear the index so it will remove the modi the the stage modifications sorry for that if you want to keep those as well and also the changes in the working directory, then you need to use the soft option. So git reset okay. dash dash soft will keep your working directory as it is and also the, the staged modifications. Right. But yeah, it's a very good idea to just do git log uh, or git graph before and after you do git reset because it's a rather dangerous command as you can lose commits. Um, so but I'll you don't just, lose them, but it's hard to recover. So. I'll just mention that there is something called git reflog, which then is where it's possible to get back your your uh, now uh, get back old commits. So uh, if I will do that, I'll you'll see that uh, the reverted and the add more content commits are, are available. So this is a way to, if you have deleted too much, you, you can use the ref log to get old commits back again. So, so when we say that uh, something is committed, that it's almost impossible to lose it, it's due to this ref log uh, me mechanism. Yeah. So git uh, so reflow will store all the commands whenever the head is changed. Yes. The reference to the head is changed. Okay, this was uh, undoing and recovering. So we need we see that we need to be. Uh, uh, be a little bit cautious when we work with uh, modifying history. Um, we can uh, harm others and we can harm ourselves if we're not uh, if we're not uh, sure what we're doing. But uh, but we um, but the, the tools we have at our hands you know, gives possibilities to modifying history. So that's what we have about, uh, about uh, mod undoing and mod uh, modifying history. Uh, we have um, something called the git staging which we'll leave for you to read up on i'll uh, so it's available it's available uh, under op optional episodes so so using the git staging area the staging is where you can then put, put all save um, a modified work for uh, continuing it with it later. I'll, uh, what I want to mention now is that uh, uh, we also have a git under the hood which gives more details about how git works. Um, up to uh, and until now, we only have made uh, one alias, and that's the git graph. So it's uh, here is a list of uh, good aliases to use. So we see a list list of aliases that can be configured uh, with the git config command and uh, this uh, more gives uh, shortens uh, typing and uh, and uh, 
can be defined this command this addresses can be defined to so so that working with git in the command line is much more efficient than writing the full commands so like uh, yes. git checkout is defined just git co and yeah, commit it's this yes yeah, so it's most useful, I think, when uh, when you use uh, certain options often, and then you don't want to type all those options. Yeah. That's right. So uh, we'll leave it as an exercise to you. To you can define these again, aliases uh, after the lesson, and then. You see that these are global aliases, so they will work for all your Git repositories as they are defined on the global config file. So if I would want to define it only for the repository that I am working in, so let's say the recipe repository, just so that I do not mess up my global settings until I know that I actually want to use them. What? Uh, how could I use Git config then? Uh, is it then git config local? I'm uh, not sure. Yes, git config dash dash local. And uh, then the rest is just the same. Yeah, the, yeah right. So it's uh, git config minus minus local alias alias br branch, for instance like this so then br will only work in the in the current repository yeah so then whenever i type git br that will actually mean git branch git br so here is only one branch and that is that's branch master and then all options that work with branch, they will work with uh, Git BR as well. So right? that's so right. Git so if I Git mm. branch experiment like this, Git BR experiment get defined as a uh, as a branch. So this is very useful when you're working uh, with Git in the command line on the command line. Okay then. I think it's then time for another break, isn't it? Yes, yes. And I think we can take a break until, uh, so a 14 minutes break until uh, 12 o'clock or uh, 13, depending where you are. And then we are just going to uh, end up with uh, some good practices for using it. And we'll also have a discussion together using the collaborative document. Of what is your experience with Git, be it beginner or more advanced user? So. Welcome back in, uh, well, 14 in minutes time. Okay, welcome back everyone. I hope the sound is okay, otherwise uh, write it in the chat. So uh, as a final session for today, we are going to discuss a bit how much uh, Git you actually need. And uh, I will just uh, go through the material that we have, and uh, we are going to finish off with a uh, uh, common discussion, both uh, here in the studio, so to say, and also in uh, uh, um, all together via the collaborative uh, document. So uh, how much Git do you actually need? And uh, Irrespective of whom you ask, you are going to get uh, a, a different answer because beginners and more advanced users, uh, they uh, 
they use it they use git differently and also i i should also say that uh, uh many advanced users they uh, they uh, have they use different solutions for doing the same thing so for example even reverting commits or or uh, or undoing commits uh, they uh, pre they all have different um, solutions but if you are just uh, starting out using git so you have your first a simple repository um, then uh, what uh, what should you do so typically well you only have one branch and uh, and then you will uh, start adding a couple of commits in your branch and you can rename your branch to whatever you find uh, useful uh, be it master main or or uh, anything that is um, is um, uh, well, sorry that uh, that tells a bit about what the, the project is all about. Uh, it can be the soft, the name of the software, for example. That uh, that can also be the name of your branch. And uh, and uh, you should start using branches whenever you have uh, some uh, new ideas for your project, and especially if you are not sure that um, uh, it is a feature that you want to introduce in your code. Because it's easier to remove a branch, and then uh, just keep the the main line of uh, the repository uh, linear, and uh, and only have the important commits or the commits that you are sure about. And then uh, the tags feature, I think, is very nice. So you use the git tag to um, um, to add a tag to a particular version, so that it is easier to refer to it. You don't have to uh, type an ugly hash. Uh, I mean, it can be more meaningful to to have a good name for a particular version. And uh, once you start uh, um, pushing your uh, repository to GitHub or uh, or other platforms, and you invite uh, collaborators to your project, then um, then well, I think we are all. But we are all humans and we need to accept that at uh, some point uh, things are going to break uh, but uh, you can um, you can um, undo uh, mistakes as we have seen and um, and uh, if uh, if you only have a limited number of uh, collaborators for your project then it is fine that you are only working with the main branch be it called main or master or uh, or whatever good name you have for it, but the moment you you start to have uh, more and more persons, then you want to write to protect your branch, uh, well, your one, main one, branch. And what? One, yes, Bjorn. Uh, one, one thing: uh, if you have a project with few persons, um, uh, uh, a good way of of uh, having a branch naming principle is to include the username or the github username in the branch name so so that you see the the uh, where the who the the uh, the creator of a commit uh, who is the creator of a commit just by yes. watching mm -hmm. out the branch name so that's yeah, quite that's often a, used that's a very good uh, strategy indeed so um uh, so whenever you do have quite a few persons, and I should say whenever you want to have, as a main developer, whenever you want to have more control of what is being pushed to your repository, to your remote repository, then you want to write protect the branch. And that means that people, that the default is that, uh, that, uh, that users cannot push to the main branch. Uh, it has to be pushed to a uh, a um, uh, additional branch, and then uh, and then actually and then a PR, so a pull request will show up on uh, GitHub, and then uh, one of the main developers or admins, and they are called admins on GitHub, they have to uh, accept uh, this uh, 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 suggestion for uh, for new commits. So. Um, and we are actually going to see how we can do that tomorrow in the Git collaborative lesson. So Radovan and Anya will uh, tell you what is most important to know about 
when it comes to working um, um, on uh, GitHub together with, uh, with other people. So uh, distributing releases. Um, so uh, um, this is where your tags actually come in handy because you can have a nice tag for, for your release um, uh, version. And, uh, and you can read more about some good models of, uh, of uh, branching. And um, uh, how about staging and committing? How often should you stage and commit? So as a, as a beginner, it's better you commit early and you commit often because uh, you can always uh, squash together commits, uh, but, um, but I mean, your changes, they are only safe once you have committed them. Otherwise you may, uh, you may lose them. For example, if you use a Git uh, reset uh, in, uh, in a bad way. So it's better you commit and you can always revert back to whatever you have done. So, uh, there you can, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you say that you can squash commits, that is to put several commits together in, in one commit. And this can be done locally uh, or it you can do it on GitHub. Um, so so GitHub gives you the option of, of squashing commits as well. Exactly. We only mention it briefly. I mean, you can do it with the git rebase command. And um, it's actually git rebase uh, dash i, so interactive. Then you can uh, pick and choose uh, which command, uh, which commits you want to squish together. It's more on the advanced part. But uh, I would say if you're interested uh, on this, then you can uh, uh, Google a bit. And maybe actually now it's a good time to show you one of my favorite resources for, uh, uh, for finding out more about commands. And then I do by going to git uh, scm. So that's, uh, I will scroll down. Sorry, I will modify the, the um, size of my window. So the, you can actually see the page. So it's git scm. Oh, sorry, so much crap. Uh, so uh, here um, you can find basically everything about git. And uh, one thing I like a lot is actually the, the documentation. You can also have it as a like complete documentation, but what is, is even nicer is the git book. And you can read it online. And there are, there are some introductory chapters as well, actually. Uh, and um, so, yeah, you don't have to read this. I don't know. It's actually 400 pages or <laughs> more of Git. Uh, a lot of content is good, but uh, maybe not. Uh, uh, it's not your priority. So let's go back. But this is one very nice resource, in my opinion. And uh, and then uh, uh, let's talk a bit about the size of, uh, of the commits. And I would say that it's... Um, it's better that they are not very large because if you introduce a bug, then it may be harder to, um, um, well, not to find it, but I mean, if you if you do want to correct it, then it's, it's nicer if you work with uh, smaller commits. And then whenever you work on different features, then, uh, uh, then it's good that uh, you keep the changes in different commits. But uh, as it also says here, it's better you do imperfect commits than committing no commits uh, at all, and uh, and do uh, do create a remote for your local repository as early as possible, because if your laptop breaks, uh, then at least you have another backup for your um, for your repository. So um, we all use. Git differently, and uh, we all plan to use Git uh, in different ways. So uh, I think that uh, it's uh, it would be very nice to hear from you all participants and also some of our expert um, helpers on how they use uh, Git on uh, on a daily basis. So uh, let's go then to our collaborative document and uh, and uh, write some of the input there. And we also actually have uh, tomorrow's teacher with us, Radovan, who is also going to give us some feedback on how he's using it. And later, later, 
before we end up on how we are going to do things tomorrow. Hi, Radovan. Hi, Diana. Hi, everybody. Yes, so I can say in a moment a little bit about tomorrow, if this is the right time. And how do I use Git? I use Git for almost everything. So all the lessons that you see here, we, we, we do this through Git. We do this through GitHub. Documents, manuscripts, anything that I will that I don't want to forget, I put under version control. Is there anything that you do not use Git for? Uh, binary files. Uh, but that also means that I try to avoid anything that insists on binary files and I prefer text files if I have the choice so that I can again use Git. How about you? Yeah, I also use Git for almost everything and um, I don't work so much with sensitive data, but some of my colleagues have. So that uh, that is one example when where I would avoid uh, GitHub in particular. So um, that's a great yeah. point. Sensitive data, patient data. Then of course we don't want to put it on a on a public web server that is in a different country. Yes, yes. So even if it's even if the repo is protected, I mean there are different laws in different countries, so I would avoid putting it even in a private GitHub repo. That's one example I can think of. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I also use GitHub for pretty much almost everything. Jon, Richard, what about you? Uh, well, actually, I, I'm using uh, Git more and more. Uh, I'm also moving from tools that are not text-based to text-based tools. So, so I use some, uh, much more Markdown files now than before, just because I can then commit those to, mm -hmm. to a repository. Mm -hmm. um, I also use several uh, Git uh, ser uh, external services. So uh, GitHub I use most for code refinery work since it's um, public. Uh, and then I use uh, source code refinery uh, .org for uh, more private things. Mm -hmm. Because there, there I can give you access to only me or 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 uh, others that I want to. Uh, if I want to protect the content, I also use Bitbucket for uh, for some of the same reasons. Mm -hmm. So I guess the choice of the server is uh, something that you and your coworkers uh, choose upon. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's a good point too. Yeah. Different, uh, different servers depending on what one works on, and sometimes it's dictated by what our colleagues prefer or have already set up. I would like to share one tip that helps me a lot, but I don't see it in mentioned, and that is when you collaborate on documents with Git. I find it really, really useful to configure your editor so that you have not too long lines. Mm -hmm. So you can write a line that goes over the whole paragraph, but for Git it will look like one line of code. Mm -hmm. And um, I find it incredibly useful in my editor to have short lines, because then the rendered thing, you know, the LaTeX document, the PDF, it still looks the same, but it makes working with Git easier because then the, diff, the diffs are smaller it's easier to review it for the other people. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, thanks for sharing it. Yeah. So how um, do you use Git uh, in the command line or do you use some, uh, some uh, different applications for, uh, for committing or inspecting history of different repos? How do you typically work? I use uh, Git only on the command line. Um, mm. I think this, together with the aliases that we've shown, mm -hmm. this uh, gives very efficient uh, use of the commands. Yeah, same for me. Yeah, like. for me too, although, um, please, Richard. Okay, go ahead. 
So I uh, almost exclusively use it in the, on the command line, but uh, some of my uh, students, I would say, they, they are more uh, uh, accustomed to using graphical interfaces. For, for them, I'm actually struggling to learn more about uh, other uh, other programs that, uh, that one can use together with Git. And actually, I should say that uh, VS Code is one exception. So I do use VS Code with Git, and that's, that, uh, that I like. But, uh, but there are other, other uh, tools out there that one can use, and I think Git uh, IMS, I don't remember what was it. I and we look it up. But uh, yeah, there are other ways of visualizing Git commits nicely, and that can be very useful for some people that really do not like the command line. And in this context, I can say that mm -hmm. when I work with Git and review the work of others, I actually typically work in the web web browser. So then mm -hmm. it happens on GitLab, GitHub. Mm -hmm. When I create work for other people to review, then I create it on the command line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All com all of my commits usually go from the command line, with the exception of some very small typos that I find. Uh, then I may uh, edit them directly on GitHub. But that's I try to avoid that. But yeah, again, if they are very very small changes, then then I will do it directly on GitHub. And especially if it's just test. If I do. If I commit changes to uh, uh, to a code, uh, then uh, I will do it uh, on my computer, and then I will make sure I uh, run some tests, and then I commit. Yeah. Although you can have some testing on GitHub as well. Sorry for deviating, but yeah, and that we'll see how you can do. And it's actually nice to to have these automatic tests so that. Uh, you you uh, keep the keep your code as bug free as possible. Yeah. I have maybe a radical use case that I mm. do. So I mean people so everything that everyone else has been saying I agree with. But you know there are some cases that go beyond these. Like for example for our teams we have different photos of events and like our hardware and activities, things like that. That's in a Git repository. So even though these are relatively large binary files and all. Um, sorry. She doesn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so why is this? Well, I don't need to diff them and merge them. They basically mm. get added once. I mean, if I did need to diff and merge them, it's not that anything else could do that anyway. And it's basically put them in Git and push them to a shared repository. And the space is, I mean, a lot larger than code, but not too much. Or use something like Google Drive to synchronize them. And then I'm downloading and uploading them all the time. So, I mean, these kinds of cases where something's not perfect, but it's still better than most other cases. Um, yeah. I've got several things like that, you know. So Git is, for the large files, Git does store another copy of them compressed, which for pictures doesn't make them much smaller. But still, I think that's a lot less bad than not using Git. If, the, if it got huge, like hundreds of gigabytes or gigabytes, I'd be looking for some other alternative, but, yeah. Does anyone else have any radical use cases that go beyond what we've been talking about here? While you're thinking, maybe I can answer one comment about latex and uh, and uh, using version control, or at least uh, Git and uh, GitHub for uh, version and controlling latex documents. That was actually for collaborative documents. Uh, I use Overleaf, but that is because it's easier somehow to uh, to uh, share and edit documents together. It's just 
Well, it's similar. It's similar. Although if it does uh, uh, build on top of GitHub, so uh, uh, on top of it, so I don't see any problem using that. So it's different solutions doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, these cases. I where think. Uh, I'm sorry. I think no. it's harder to convince the PIs or mm -hmm. senior researchers mm -hmm. to uh, to use uh, GitHub instead of Overleaf. Some people want a as simple interface as possible and not having to learn new things. I think that's uh, that's where the resistance comes from, really. Is there background noise from me? It could be from my computer. It's a bit noisy. I don't know. I don't know. But um, um. I just uh, would like to say that it's nice to see how you all plan to use Git. I mean, all you participants. Uh, and uh, and then uh, I would actually like to give the word to Radovan so that he can tell us a bit uh, more on how we are, what we are going to do tomorrow. And if there is anything we should prepare before that. Well, thanks, for, thanks, thanks for asking this. Should I? Take the screen for this. Yes, go ahead. And by the way, in uh, the meantime, there is feedback at the bottom of HackMD. Like, cat, what are you doing? He's reading right. stuff on my desk. Um, OK, to Radovan's screen. Or just a minute, let me make you co-host here. Now can you grab the screen share? Got it. Going to you. Okay. All right. So first, some context here of why I'm speaking to you now. I'll, I will be together with Dania tomorrow. We'll be teaching our collaborative version control. So we will take this to the next level, and we will collaborate together on GitHub. And we are really excited about this. I admit that I'm also really scared about this because we will try to collaborate with I don't know hundreds of people. Super scary, super exciting at the same time. The smallest mistakes I will make have big effects. So I, I'm just trying not to mess anything anything up. But the so what will happen is that and what I'm saying is mostly interesting for those of you who participate individually. So if you're part of a team, then you can relax. Also, the team leads, they can relax. You will have enough time to set this up tomorrow. But we also we want to we want to collaborate also with those of you who follow on their own, who don't have a team. And we will make this possible. We we are creating exercise repositories on GitHub. And later today you will get an email. So you don't have to remember this. But I just want you to know what this means. So you will get an email with this link, link to this repository. Um, also, please register to the workshop to make sure so that you get the email from us. So if you watch this, you haven't registered, please register. So then we have a way to email you. I will send you a link to this repository. And in this repository, I will ask you to open an issue but I will describe it really well. And in the issue, basically you will ask to get, it's an access request. It's a way for us to know your GitHub username. And you, you don't even have to change the text. Add me as a collaborator to the exercise and submit new issue. And then later today and tomorrow morning, we, we will be adding people who want to, we will be adding them to these exercise repositories. And this way, tomorrow, we can then really all together collaborate. And it will be really, really fun. And there is something else that is very important, and I will describe it in the email. But I also want you to to not forget it then to, tomorrow, or if, if you don't read the email. And that is, once you get access to the exercise repository, 
it will be it will be really important that you unwatch it. And this will be in the email. We have screenshots in the material, but still, I want you to not forget it. So we will ask you to 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 unwatch the repository. Otherwise, otherwise, if we are two hundred people on the on this exercise, you will get email notifications about the work of other people, and I don't want to flood your email inbox. So that will be that will be important, but it will be in the email. It will be in screenshots. What did I forget to say? So more about this later today. I My ambition is that within the next two hours, I will send you all the information email so that you have enough time. But even if you start with this tomorrow morning, uh, you will have enough time to participate. You will, so again, to summarize, we will ask, and this is only for the individual learners, because for, for the teams, it's different. And for the teams, it's described in the material. We will ask you to, to open an issue in a specific repository. Once you get edit, you will need to accept the invitation. So you will get an email from GitHub asking you to accept. You click, yes, I accept the invitation. And then we recommend to unwatch the exercise repository so that you don't get too many emails. And then tomorrow we will try to collaboratively develop cooking recipes with, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 people uh, through GitHub. And we will learn about code review, about good practices when, when working together uh, through Git. I'm really looking forward. I don't know whether I will be able to sleep. Yes. Okay, good. Um, I think that was good. So, anything else? Any of these other questions or comments? I mean, I also want to appreciate of, for having so many questions today. We had difficulties keeping up, but it's, that's great. Uh, if we we are editing the questions and the answers, if we find that some question was not answered, we will answer those. We will put them later today onto the workshop page, so you can find questions and answers again. We find these are really valuable output of the workshop. It's not a problem if the same question got asked several times, because we cannot expect that you read all the questions and all the answers while asking. It's not a problem at all. Yeah. We, we appreciate the many questions. Maybe. Yeah, and I will. Yeah, Richard. Oh, go ahead. So I just want to uh, say again what was already written in uh, in the hack and the indeed there are many comments that can do the same thing or or almost the same thing. And it is a bit confusing uh, that uh, it may be confusing for you that we are actually teaching that. And the reason we do it is because uh, they, uh, I think you need to understand what the difference is. And, uh, and uh, maybe your uh, colleague will come and tell you, oh, you need to do this uh, in a certain way. And then, uh, well, there is no right and wrong. I mean, you can do depending on, uh, on what, what uh, you want to achieve. You may want to do things differently. And, uh, I think it's Git. Uh, Git is also evolving as a project, and uh, and you have seen that uh, you can uh, just creating a branch. You can do this in uh, in different ways. You can either uh, use uh, um, well, sorry, I want to say switching to a branch. You can do that in different ways. You can either use Git switch or you can use uh, Git uh, checkout. And again, it I think it is important you you realize that. Uh, depending on the version that you have, some of these commands may not work. And that is why we show uh, both. 
So uh, hopefully it will become less confusing and uh, maybe reading the materials once more later today or in the coming weeks will help clarify some other things. So yeah, that's uh, what I want to say. Yeah. Let's see any other comments from here. I think generally people want more cat content. <laughs> we will try. <laughs> I'm glad it's so active today. Some other courses it wasn't coming very much. Mm. There's a comment, what happens when someone's confused and don't know if you should follow the instructor or stay with the exercise? So remember yesterday from my intro, I said, this will happen. There will be too much. Or when, was that about hack and D? But in that case, I'd recommend slow down and follow the instructor. If something is critical for the next step, then we'll usually say that and give a little bit more time and make sure most comments are resolved. But many things you can come back later in the afternoon and prepare for the next day. So thus going with the flows more important, I think. Let's see. Does anyone have a request for the story of the icebreaker tomorrow? Story, no, but it would be good to know uh, how large uh, are the projects that people collaborate on. Mm -hmm. Maybe, what if we try to find someone who can give one of their own stories about a really big project they work on? Like tens or hundreds of people. Okay, that's an idea. Um... Yeah, so should we wrap up for the day and continue tomorrow? Sounds good. Just one more reminder. So there is an important email coming up with instructions on how to join. Hopefully within the next two hours. And maybe we have also said that all the emails that we send out, you can find them also on the workshop page then. Because sometimes it goes to spam. In fact, yesterday we sent out an email, but it there was some technical issue, so emails went later out. So then you can find them also there. Yes. OK. Great. So see everyone tomorrow. Thanks for coming. Oh, and maybe one last thing for everyone still here. It is OK to join tomorrow if you know the basics of what we've done today. Like there's probably plenty of people who can join tomorrow who've already known stuff we've talked about today and yesterday and tell them and bring them. That's completely okay. But they should look at the installation instructions and communication on the web page because otherwise you can't do the mass project together. Okay, great. So see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Looking forward.